Welcome to the Tito Bonito Show. Tonight, we have very special guest burlesque icon, headmistress Joe Boobs Weldon, and the highest decorated and award title holder in burlesque, Egypt, Black Nile. And now, give it up for your host, the Cuban Missile Crisis of Burlesque, Tito Bonito! Yeah! Woo! That's me! Yeah! I'm gonna get it one day. There you go. What up, what up? Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Tito Bonito Show. We are here every Friday night on Instagram Live bringing you some of the uh, best in burlesque and some of my most famous friends. I am your host, the Cuban Missile Crisis of Burlesque, Tito Bonito. And I am so excited to spend the next hour chatting with some of uh, burlesque's best performers, producers, educators. Tonight, both of our guests are ranked several years in a row in the 21st century burlesque top 50 performers of all time. And I am very excited to have them on the show today. Uh, a little bit about me. Remember, you can check out my softcore OnlyFans, $5 in the in link in my bio. But I digress. I am very excited to welcome our guest today. We have author of the burlesque handbook all the way from New York City, the big old apple itself. We got Joe Boobs in the house tonight. So we're going to bring the incredible Joe Weldon's onto the screen. And then I am going to allow you all. Hello. Hi. Hi, gorgeous. How you doing? Good, good. Remember, everyone, if you're watching, uh, you can always submit questions for Joe or myself in the question mark box, and then we'll get to that at some point if we have time. But thank you so much for joining me, Joe. How are you doing? Thanks for having me. <laughs> of course, of course. You are such an inspiration to me and to so many people in the burlesque uh, world. And I listen, I cannot wait until the day because a lot of people tell me, what are you going to do, especially as a male burlesque artist, what are you going to do in 50 years from now? What are you going to do in 40 years from now, in 30 years? And I'm like, they're literally going to call me a legend. So I'm so excited yeah. to be able to continue on this journey, even though it seems like burlesque has had a lot of different uh, forms of existence. So as an educator, as someone who has been a part of it for so many years, what do you feel is like, the biggest change you've seen in burlesque in the last 20 years and in the last 20 years yeah which i know that's going to be a lengthy question but i want to start it off you know with a little bit of meat um well there were two things that were happening before the big change you know the lockdowns because of the pandemic uh the festival circuit because that did not exist 20 years ago right there were there weren't all these international gigs, period. And I had the rhinestones because twenty years ago on Coney Island, a rhinestone would have been hard to find. So, <laughs> do you feel? Uh, what are some of the, like the bad things you think have changed in the last like ten years? Well, everything that's bad has also has a good side, um, because you know there's been this enormous growth, and you know there used to be ten of us. So we were all in every show, you know, and then it got to the point where uh, sometimes, you know, I wasn't in a show that I wanted to be in and, um, you know, it felt because before everybody worked together all the time. And I think that uh, as it grew, more people had that experience of, um, you know, oh, how come I'm not in that show? How come I'm not in that thing? And I think that's the downside is people feeling left out but uh you know it's part of it true i do think at the same time too especially during the pandemic right now one of the biggest things because uh i know we all do feel that especially as in any form of entertainment if you're not actively creating your work but one of the things that i love about right now that we're being forced to do is kind of take a look at that and see if maybe if we're not being seen where we want to be seen, can we create those spaces? Because I mean, burlesque, before I knew it existed, the only way that I knew that it existed was kind of what I saw in the 40s and what history told me. So I never knew that there was this radical drag, like formation or transformation of this art form that would even allow someone as a cis male 
performer in it. So I think it's one of those things where it's like, even though I know that I probably would not have, who's to say, may not have had my, my, I would not have been able to perform the way that I had 10 years prior to when I was performing, I think. Uh, I, well, it just keeps changing. I was talking to someone uh, yesterday because, you know, I've been doing a lot of fashion history research. And this, a man that I've met at a bunch of conferences uh, is studying the cockettes. Do you know about the cockettes? No, what are the cockettes? There are these radical hippie drag, uh, I mean, it's hard to put them into a box, I love that. right? Yeah, and they would have fit in, you know, now in the wildest venues. I was telling uh, my friend Mark that they would have fit in really great at the House of Yes in New York. Yeah. Um, very colorful and they're very radical and they did burlesque in both the classic literary tradition, like doing parodies of, you know, upright political figures and that kind of thing. And also doing these like uh, performance art strips with lots of glitter and fabulosity. And there are legends to a lot of people in the drag scene and in neo burlesque um, and in nightlife in general, right? Right. And, you know, a, a lot of us think of our predecessors in very limited ways. So I used to think because when I worked, when I started performing with neo burlesque people in New York after being a feature dancer and strip joints, because almost none of the people that I was working with had ever heard of or seen a feature dancer in a strip joint, that they didn't have any connection to neo burlesque. And now as I look back, all these things had connections, you know, the cockettes, the feature dancers that we were, you know, like porn stars and everything. Because if you look at the performances, if you look at certain segments of the performances, for sure, they look identical. Yeah, and it's amazing how it can fuse together. And I love that because I do feel like I always was trying to find my voice in some sort of art. And I remember just even seeing burlesque with through Jeezy, like when I saw it, I was just like, it's an all women performing, it's an all female audience. And I knew it wasn't like an, a, a, a selectively lesbian event. So I was just like mind boggled that it was such an open space. And I love nightlife for being that I love the way that we are able to just like infuse everything. Um, yeah, well, you said something. I'm, wait, were you starting to ask me a question? No, you can say what you're gonna say. You said something before about how now that everything's moved online and all the venues are closed and all the producers are like, what are, what are that what are producers without venues, right? Um, if we're if we all have the same venue, um, but I've always felt like it was always that way to a certain extent. So I'm always I've always been pushing students to be true to themselves and if nobody will hire them to start their own show or if they want to start their own show to go ahead and do it. And I think on some level, uh, I mean, I appreciate the respect that people have when they're, you know, they're, oh, I don't want to step on anybody's toes or upset anybody. And that's right. nice. But I think sometimes people wait too long for permission and get resentful before they realize they can just step up and do it. And I think there's always a way because it's like my thing, especially coming to LA and when there was already an established scene here, I remember there is always, of course, a way to step on people's toes and a way to not. Mm -hmm. And you can overthink something so much to the point where, yeah, you never end up doing anything at all. But it's like, as long as you're not copying something, there's so many different ways and avenues to cover putting on a show that I think the hardest part isn't even like watching the community. It's probably just getting the venues and getting the space and the audience to actually come watch. Oh, I just accidentally turned off my camp, my light, but that's my fault. You're good. <laughs> um, but did you do it on purpose? <laughs> well, and then you're, ta you're, you are talking about students though, and how you have students cause you did start the New York school of burlesque. And yeah. can you tell us a little bit about how long that's been running and how are you, uh, transitioning. I I'm, I know you already had online, but how the pandemic has allowed you to transition? Well, I always wanted to go online and, um, you know, I, I was so busy doing regular classes that I just wasn't motivated. Uh, the School of Burlesque came about because I had a website called gstringsforever.com 
and it was about strippers and strip joints and the entrepreneurial things they were doing. Like, you know, there was someone named Fania. I don't know if anybody knows Fania, but she's great. And she started the, she was like one of the first strippers to start a pole dance studio, Fania. And there were a lot of other strippers and we all knew each other and we were just sort of breaking into the internet. So this is in the nineties, um, you know, not too long after the development of more accessible browsers, you know, the World Wide Web and all that. And then also I was seeing the neo burlesque scene and I had been a feature dancer and a performance artist for a long, long time. But when I saw the New York neo burlesque scene, it felt like I wanted to start all over uh, and do it again. So I was very excited. And I think, you know, the, with the website, nobody knew what burlesque was. It was so small, you know, I wanted everybody to know. So the website had two parts. It had the strip joint strippers being entrepreneurs and celebrating them. And then the neo burlesque, because as I understood it at the time, they were separate, which of course they weren't that separate. And I don't mean that they didn't have much in common. I mean, literally a right. lot of people were strippers and burlesque performers at the same time and utilizing elements of each in both venues. I love that. And then, so how, um, how has it been transitioning online to like, do you feel like it's more successful online or do you feel like for you, it's easier for people to come into the actual like space? Well, it's in, it's interesting because I've been around for so long that I have within the community, uh, maybe not that much, but to some degree, the impression of being an institution. But that is so funny to me because I'm really just a website and a rented studio. <laughs> you know? Do you know how many organizations are just a website and a building? Or less. Yeah. Without the building, just a website. And, you know, so. Don't call me out. <laughs> I'm kidding. I don't, I, I kind of, I want people to know because what part of what I'm hoping will happen out of this terrible tragedy, and this is the end of burlesque as we know it. And I don't know if that's, that's not the tragedy I'm talking about. Or the right. tragedy I'm talking about is the pandemic and people suffering from it. The end of burlesque as we know it is an opportunity. And, and burlesque has ended a million times and been changed a million times. And people must do what they want. And I said this before the pandemic and before all the venues were closed, but now it's even more, it's like, this is, it's not even, it's too terrible of a situation for it to be as called anything like a silver lining. Yeah. But it's the opportunity of a lifetime for people who've been waiting for things to be more accessible. It's just, you know, do it. Stop waiting. Stop looking for permission. Stop worrying about the people you resent that have done the wrong things. And I don't, by that, I don't mean to refrain from holding people accountable for past deeds. I mean, to just accept that the people that you wanted out of your way, they're out of your way. They're, yeah. <laughs> I love that burlesque is dead. Long live burlesque. Come on, people. Yes. I love that in uh, tragedy, you can see hope. And because uh, I do feel like as an artist that we have to have that innately in our body to be able to because nothing lasts forever in art. And it's like, no. that's kind of the point of it. But it's like, you can't. And I love that that hearing a phrase like, this is the end of burlesque is so jarring, but at the same time, having the sentence finish with optimism is just like, yeah, it has ended a million times and it will only end if all of us just stop doing it, which won't happen. So I'm excited to see what, what do you feel like? Do you feel like you can see where it would, how it would change? Or do you feel like the biggest change is gonna be the participants performing it? I, well, I, I've, I'm seeing some good and bad things happen you know some so there's people who have there are people sorry there is people there are people who have skills that are going to translate really well online and there are people who won't and it remains to be seen you know i cannot edit a video to save my life well you, you know i got you if you ever need a girl oh thanks because i have an idea but <laughs> anytime but, but it's not my skill set. I'm not dying to do it. But think about all these YouTube stars, and that's all they do, right? This is the chance for some burlesque people to be that, 
to transform burlesque into maybe that format. Do you, and do you feel like burlesque can be mainstream in a sense? No. Yeah, I always feel like that's yeah. my answer to it. And I don't, I feel like I would never want it to be something where people who cannot, like Drag Race, where you have 13 year olds who can't go to a bar saying how to do that art form. Like, I never want to see that happen. I don't know. Uh, Drag Race is, uh, so I, you know, I've been around drag all my life. Right. And I've been around uh, nightlife all my life. So nightlife has saved my life a, a million times. And the drag community has saved me, uh, you know, all these outsider communities. Um, and because you know, this is the thing. I think everything that existed in drag still exists. They're still super subversive, super... Uh, you know, working with like, like working on a shoestring and having to be really innovative because they don't have anything. Right. Or because one of my favorite drag queens of all time, and I don't even know if you consider them a drag queen, is Vin Santos. Oh, yeah. In New Orleans. So, um, but that all still exists. It's just that this other thing now also exists. And it's the same with burlesque, in my opinion. So there was still wild small bars and there were more than there had ever been before of these wild events at smaller bars um that were put together in a very subversive way you know and they were proliferating so there were more of them than there had ever been before when you know at the time of the lockdown right there were also things that had not existed 10 years before like uh you know a lot of restaurants with fancy burlesque so it isn't that that other stuff stopped happening. It was happening more than I'd ever seen it. The right. uh, subversive underground. But prior to that, this uh, burlesque that was more showgirl and glamour based that was easier for the mainstream to grasp existed additionally. But a lot of people felt supplanted because, because it was mainstream and not mainstream more understandable to the mainstream because right. people are always asking me if like classic burlesque because I love to do it, right? If it's pandering to the male gaze somehow, have you heard that? Yeah, I have, like, yes. Yeah. yeah, okay. So I've been a sex worker since 1979. And Damn, I have... you look, do you look 25 though? Stop it. <laughs> I do not, but anyway. Um, so I've been a, a sex worker and I, I did my last session in February. Before the before the lockdown, ah, what's itching my nose? Anyway, um, not the same things that used to itch my nose. <laughs> yeah, you can itch your nose. This is a good time here. We're just no, here hanging out. I'm, no, I'm just remembering things. So, oh. I, I've been a sex worker for forty some years, and I have worked in so many fetish clubs. I worked in strip joints, and I met so many customers that do not hesitate to tell you what they think is pretty and what they like and what they want to see in a very often very entitled way but sometimes a very lovely way you know like if you can accommodate this i have big bucks for you that's what we like to hear we love that yeah <laughs> but i have never ever ever had a client and I, I you know i started working as a dominatrix in like 96 97 full time and had already been in the fetish scene for over a decade Never had any man ask me to wear double eyelashes and glitter lipstick and put on a feather boa. Never, 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 never. And the only time I ever had a client request double eyelashes, glitter lips, and a feather boa was for him. <laughs> so, so it's still not really mainstreamish, you know? It's it's interesting though. Well, they'll say, oh, Dita is mainstream. Dita is really unusual. Yeah. And so it's, you know, it's a matter of relativity. There are a lot of, some of my last performances before the shutdown were with um, Switch and Play mm -hmm. and with uh, the Fuck You Review and, um, also, what was the other? There were a few. I don't know. Some things. And and um, 
you know, they're very radical spaces. But I think the differentiation between classic and neo is kind of a farce. I like that. And why do you think that's the case, technically? The so like, do you think they should be separated or should it just no no i yeah. like to see everything in one show that's the thing i i think they go well together they're they all subvert something different you know whether it's um you know the hyper glamour or uh hyper punk or whatever it is hyper edge i think yeah. it all goes together and i think it's the characteristic of exaggeration and playfulness is the greater thing that all these styles of burlesque have in common than a few rhinestones can really separate them. If I, com I completely agree with that. Jill, I could talk to you forever yeah. about anything you want. And I almost contemplated making this whole hour just you. Uh, but I do want to talk on some things that I, you're working on right now. One of them is the Dress Like a Whore project. Would you yeah. like to elaborate a little bit more about that? So I've been working on this project for a long time. That's what I was working on uh, when I came up with the idea for the history of leopard print. So it's called Dress Like a Whore. And it's about the clothing that sex workers, and by sex workers, I mean the umbrella term sex workers. So strippers, dominatrices, cam workers, I, you know, and right. um, prostitutes. I know some people don't like that word, but I have been one, so I'm, and I'm comfortable with it, so I'm going to say it, but I would never say it to anyone who doesn't want to be called that. Um, but that, you know, why do we wear what we wear? What's unique about what we wear? How do we choose it? And what has our influence on fashion and what has fashion's influence on us been? So it's about uh, sex work, fashion, and culture. And as I was doing it, I realized there were all these elements of clothing selection uh, that we did in, uh, in our working environments. Like in a strip joint, I would be engaging all these different intersections, which would be my personal taste. Uh, what I thought would help me make more money, what I thought the clientele would like, what the management did and didn't want me to wear, and above all, what the law would and wouldn't allow me to wear. So I had to make all of my decisions huh. in the midst of all that. And so that's what I'm writing about. I love that. Because you, you blog and then uh, not only on top of that, but you're also going to be having a lecture online next week about the history of the leopard. Yeah. Which we all, anyone that knows you knows how much you love leopard prints. You're yes. wearing some right now, right? I'm wearing many leopard print pieces right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm wearing a leopard print hoodie, leopard leggings, and leopard underwear, and I'm sitting in a leopard chair. <laughs> <laughs> that is so fucking hot. That is so good. I love that. I um, have a problem. And I adore you too. I'm so glad you're doing this show. It's so much fun to see your face. It's so much fun to see yours. And I know like uh, we're doing the best that we can. Like there's going to be Burlesque Call of Fame digitally next month in August, yeah. which is going to be amazing. Uh, I just, I know that like my peace and my happiness as an artist has come through Burlesque. It's come from uh, finding this community that I just always kind of knew I was a part of, but didn't really know until I found them. And the joy and uh, experiences I've had with you all have been so like life-changing and have made me so just humbled and happy. And it really always, whenever life gets me down or, you know, that depression kicks in, it always brings me back to like, what's the next step? There's always, like, there's no time to be sitting here moping about what isn't or what can be or what hasn't been. It's like, you can focus on what can be and, and built. And I know that I've learned that through burlesque and the challenges that I've had performing burlesque. So all of you who have welcomed me have been like, especially that, you know, like, I feel so bad being just like a dude with no makeup on stripping, but I know you all see my heart. And I know that you see that in every performer that puts their heart on stage. So it's one of those welcoming communities that I really do wish that people understood the magic of it. And when they do, which inevitably happens to every single people, my family is very right wing, 
And even when they finally saw burlesque in the right, yeah. And when they saw it, it kind of shifted their brain into being like, oh, I understand. And it just opened up this path of love that like, I don't know how else I would have done that with them. So I always, I, you know, I appreciate you and I love you so much for doing this show. Do you want to play a game with me, Joe? Okay. We're going to play a game, which is one of my favorites. It's uh, sponsored by, it's sponsored by Jeez Louise because she invented it. Uh, uh, it's called Name That Stripper. So what's yeah. going to happen okay. is, let me get my glasses. yo, get your glasses. And I'm going to turn on the comments so you can have help from the people in the chat. So everyone get ready to help Joe if Joe needs it. What is going to happen is I'm going to show a pixelated picture of a stripper. We're going to keep it to burlesque for tonight. And you're going to tell me who it is. Okay, here we go. Our first name that stripper. Who do you think that is? Oh, I'm going to need help every minute, but I'm going to say... I don't want to stump you. No, do I? I'm so easy to stump because my eyes are terrible. I will, uh, I believe... I can give you a hint. Give me a hint because my eyes are so bad. This is an Asian performer. Is that Frankie? No, we've already had her on the show. Who do you guys think it is in the audience? Watch, they're all like, I don't fucking know. I never stomp. I stomped a couple of times, actually. Not going to lie. I've definitely stomped. I'm easy to stomp. I'm easy to stomp. Listen, that's going to be my new tagline. So stop. This is Agent Wednesday. Oh, my God. I love her. I know you do. And this is uh, Agent Wednesday I on the cover of Glamour her. magazine serving some sexy Catherine Delishness. Looking so fine. Mm. I love okay. her. I have not seen that photo of her, but she is an absolutely stunning performer. And I, she's, she does some fun art, too. She really, she really does. Uh, yeah. All right, here we go. Name this stripper. This one I think is hard. <laughs> this is... Um... <laughs> You're going to have to tell me every time. <laughs> uh, that's fine. I love it because then I get to also promote the, the performers. Uh, they are, I believe, half Cuban from... Well, from all over, but I damn, I met them in New York. Uh, contortionist. Oh, is it Christina? Christina Nakaya. Yes. <laughs> she, my mom loved her when she saw her perform, and she was very much like this. In <laughs> That's why I picked her because I love her so much, and this is exactly. Yeah, I'm probably gonna try to recreate this photo. Okay, I'm not trying oh, to make this hard. <laughs> I'm not trying to make this hard. And I told, look, Jezebel it Thunder. It doesn't matter. Says, I'm terrible at this stuff. Go for it. You're good. Jezebel Thunder and Ruby Champagne are in the chat right now. So they're going to help you out. Here's our next. Hey, uh, Ruby. Hey, here's our next name that stripper. Who is this beautiful young lady? These are hard today. <laughs> I don't know these photos at all. That's what I say. I don't, I've never seen this photo. But you know them because you always say it when you. Do we know this is well, just. What were you going to say? Oh, I just, I, I just don't. If I had seen the photo before, I'd be, I might be able to guess, but I don't, I can't tell who it is. This is Zyra Lee Vanity from Toronto. She is spectacular. I'm a super fan, super duper fan. I love it because I did dig deep for these photos. I did kind of try this one. I think is going to be easy, and it kind of looks like this photo. So we're going to try a little. Yes, Jezebel, she's Canadian. We, we got that. Who is this stripper? Who is this stripper? <laughs> I'm not trying to stump you, Joe. I know, I know, I know. It's okay. Um, I'm trying to go by the, the hair, and I'm not sure. I can give you one hint of where their location is. Yeah. They're in New Orleans. Oh, so it's Bella. Yes, Bella Blue. Yeah. I just, yeah. <laughs> that, that one looks so much so. like this I mean, one, I though. I really tried. I recognize her shoulders and her hair and everything. I'm just not good at this, but I'm having fun, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> No, I love you. I love you for trying. We got two more. Name this stripper. I don't know, but I like the energy. <laughs> I'm not going to be able to guess anybody. This one, uh, a good uh, hint is food. Food? Calamit? No. Close, but no. Not close. Well, I mean, you say food numbers and calamity is first person. True, camera. true. Uh, also because Asian. She does, she does have, but it doesn't look like calamity. No, uh, yeah, no, but Coco, <laughs> oh no. Oh, oh my God. 
my this, god. I think this is from a I think this is from a Rob Zombie show. That's why I think she looks so bloody. She and I had the best conversation about Yoko Ono and all the Yoko Ono numbers we would like to do. Ooh, look, yeah. we have inter I, we have internet. Okay, this one's gonna be a little bit hard. All Yoko Ono tribute show. I'm down for that. I will watch that. I will watch the <laughs> fuck out of that. If you need a John Lennon to just use, I can switch it up. Like, uh, this last one is not going to be pixelated. It's actually going to be a baby photo of someone. Oh. And then you can just think of maybe who it might be. And then let me know. I bet you you're going to get this one, though. Who is this little nugget? Oh. Who do you think would be the only person that I would probably mention every single episode? I mean, the only person I would imagine you would mention every single episode is G's. Ding, 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 oh, well, ding. That, that's a hell of a, that's a hell of a tip. Well, that <laughs> is the cutest picture. Look at that is, face. Is this, that when she sent me this recently, I, I wanted to do is grab those arms and just like bite them. She is too mm -hmm. adorable. Yes, at least you got the last one. And honestly, that was the most important one to me. <laughs> Joe, would you like to say anything to everyone before you, uh, before we say bye to you? Uh, can I promote something? You can always promote anything you like. Okay, I would promote two things. I'm doing the History of Leopard Print on the 29th. It's on the School of Burlesque website. And tomorrow there's an all-day Burley Con Burley Pod. And Jesus is teaching. She's teaching her twerk class. Uh, Pearl is doing a healing workshop. Uh, Pochop is teaching. Who else is teaching? So many amazing people. So that's on uh, the Burley Pod website. BurleyCon, Burley Pod. BurleyCon.org slash Burley Pod. I believe so. I'll make sure to but link if everything. Do, if you search for Burley Pod, it will come up. I'll make sure to link everything in the comments. So if you send me those links, I'll make sure to put that in the caption at the end of this. Yeah, there's... Oh, and Isaiah Esquire is teaching heels, and there's some workshops on um, managing how to manage microaggressions and things like that. It's pretty great. Awesome. Molly Galore in the uh, audience says, thanks, Joe, for the confidence and tips I got from your book before my first show. <laughs> yes, Molly performs with us at one of our shows. Uh, I love you so much. Thank you so much for joining I us, Joe Boo. If anybody wants to send Joe Boob some money for doing this, uh, because I love her so much, please hit her up on Venmo. Uh, if, if you send me any money, I will give it to the Black Sex, work, sex Workers Liberation March that's happening in New York on August 1st. Awesome. We love that. Thank you so much for that. Joe, have a great night. It's past your bedtime. You got to go. It is past your bedtime. <laughs> I love you so much. Thank you for joining. I love you. I love have you a great too. night. Bye. Bye. Oh, we love Joe Boobs. She is amazing. Oh my gosh, I am so excited. I was a bit nervous in the beginning if y'all didn't catch that, but um, we're moving on. We're having good ass time. Also, I do want to shout out some birthdays today. We got Emily who is celebrating her friggin' birthday today. My little cousin and my little brother. Look, this is my face, so it actually works. My little cousin, uh, my little brother is also celebrating his birthday today. And today we also had the Queen Shea Coulee day one. We've been, we been standing Shea Coulee before y'all knew who Shea Coulee was. She won All-Star Spoiler Alert. She finally fucking, what? Ah, throw some hearts there because, ah, look at this goddess. Yes, we are so proud of Shea Coulee, friend of ours. And now the world. Shea Coulee, shake a leg, Shea Coulee. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Whew. All right, before I bring on our next guest, there is always this little silly part that I want to try, which is, which Cuban food am I? And if I don't get croquetas, I swear, croquetas, croquetas, no whammies, no whammies, no whammies, no whammies, croquetas. Damn, you go. Oh, oh. Okay, I'll be fine. Also, we do want to shout out to our sponsors, Ever After Creations, right here on Instagram with an extra S at the end because she's pobrecita. Uh, please check them out. They have custom shirts, masks, uh, 
everything you basically need customized, she got you. And also make sure that if you're running out of toilet paper in this pandemic, you might as well get yourself a bidet from Aim to Wash. They're going to keep you super clean and help you be a little bit more green. You know what I'm saying? Man, that was good. I didn't even write that. I just, just came on me. Came to me. Came on me. Okay. <sighs> y'all, I am ready for our next guest. How are y'all feeling in there? Y'all feeling good? If you have any questions, please put them in the comments. Uh, I am about to bring out the golden goddess of beauty, body, and sex, y'all. When I tell you the energy that's about to grace your screens, you better hold on to something tight. Please give it up for Egypt. Black Nile. Yes. Hi. How my are love, you? my life, how are you doing today? I'm good. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you great. How are you doing? I'm good. And thank you for the spoiler alert. I'm watching right now and i was like oh because eight o'clock it comes on so thank you listen wow. I, it comes on at eight o'clock too and i still I, if, if <laughs> i was like you'll be all right you'll be all right um it's ah, you, know I'm a pageant girl. you know i'm a pageant girl you know i like the excitement of in the build up and when you said it i was like ah oh. <laughs> i can't help it i can't help it shea coulee has been I have I I came up with Shay, so yeah. th that's like if Jeezy won All Stars. I gotta be like, I gotta, and I was gonna do it first, and I was so nervous about Joe that I was just like, let's bring Joe on, let's do this. Uh, you look gorgeous. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm doing all right. I can't complain. Uh, I wanted to touch on some stuff, some projects that you're working on, and also some of. Uh, just wanted to have you on and, you know, share a little bit about your story. You uh, have done pretty much fucking everything. Look, we already have a question in the comments. Oh, we got Joe Weldon sending you a love you Egypt message. I love you, Joe. I uh, love you. Joe. You are, are a professional dancer, a burlesque entertainer, a choreographer, an instructor, a social worker, a sex worker. Is there anything that Egypt Black Now cannot do? I can't paint. <laughs> Listen, neither can RuPaul, apparently. <laughs> I can't paint. I just found out RuPaul can't paint either, though. Oh, wow. Mm, mm, mm. But, but you got your start, you got your start uh, working in sex work. And there's actually an amazing uh, documentary that I just watched called Shakedown. Uh, do you want to talk a little bit about this documentary that focuses on gay strip sex work? You know, it was many moons ago, and um, I started dancing with Shakedown probably like in 1995, 1996. Uh-oh, everybody knows my age now, right? Okay. So <laughs> what's, what's crazy about that is that I didn't even know at that time that it was a movement. I didn't even know that we were creating any type of spaces, any type of change. I was just a young woman in college who had children as a single parent, trying to have a hustle, you know, trying to make money, and I was a lesbian. And, you know, as Joe said, like, I was raised by, you know, the drag community, and, you know, we started at the Catch One, which kind of went into the Shakedown thing at another club, and it was a great time. Like, I think, you know, the woman that I am today was built through Shakedown because, you know, um, we used to drink, we used to fight, we got arrested. We, I mean, oh my God, we did everything that happens in the strip club, you know, so, and we wore costumes, and I always, when I look back at that time, I'm like, I was a burlesque dancer already, I just didn't know, you know, because I was all about rhinestones and costuming and wigs and being dragged up, you know, so it was a good time, and I'm glad that they're really promoting that um, documentary now, so people who are wondering where I come from or why I dance the way I dance, now they can see the history of Egypt before I was Black Nile. And everyone can watch that documentary because I watched it on the website. If you just Google Shakedown Documentary, I believe it's mm -hmm. Layla is the director. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, you can just look it right on the website. You can watch it. It's an hour and it is amazing. Like, I love watching you in that element. I've known you for now. Has it been about seven years, I think? About that seven, I eight. Yeah. 
And you yeah. and you in burlesque got your start here in Los Angeles at Monday Night Tees, even though you had already yeah. been performing a lot. And you were part of a Prince tribute show. <laughs> what was uh -oh. the name of that show? I love that name so much. That was that was um wasn't it the fairy tale the urban fairy tale? No 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 that was the first time we worked together. But your first oh. start was uh, in the Prince tribute show. Oh you thought oh yeah oh for yeah. exotic they, titty. Yeah exotic titty and I did um the question of you as a cat as a purple and gold cat. Yeah. <laughs> I love that show so much. I do miss that fucking show incredibly. And that's oh. one of the things that it's incredible that to see. That was my graduation show. You know that? It, that what? Say that again? That was my graduation show from, um, Lily's, from Lily's school. Lily's Wayward School of... Is that the right girl. way I'm saying it? You graduated. Yeah, Wayward School, yeah, Wayward school of Girls. Yeah. Lily Von Shup, shout out. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, you've, you've completely created a career in those last eight years that is incredible to watch you continuously grow and then on top of all of that you are one you are the highest decorated award and title holder in burlesque that's insane can we say how many titles you have sure go ahead 42 y'all there are 40 I, you're not even that old yet and the thing about it <laughs> is that is that, is that I want to try something right now where I want to play a game with you. It's going to be one of the two games we play, but this one is going to be, I have been wanting to do this as a host my entire burlesque career knowing you because I love to brag about you all. And I love that a lot of you are so humble that you don't really like me doing it. But I want to do this now because if you have 42 titles, I want to go through them. Okay. Oh, shit. So the way we're going to do this game is I'm going to name the, I'm then going to name the title and you're gonna give me a one word response to that title. <laughs> just the first thing that comes to your head, don't overthink it, just have fun, okay. get to it. You won these awards, you remember something. I don't and, remember shit, but go ahead, are, come on. And the rules are fun. You can say two okay. words, three, I'm not gonna judge you, you're not going to jail, nothing like that. Uh, but okay. we're gonna go down this entire list because I fucking love this and I am, I, I, I appreciate your competitiveness, but as a sore loser myself, I don't like competition. So I appreciate someone that does and is so good at it. So I want to brag. Your first one, we're going to start from the most recent and go all the way down. 21st Century Burlesque Top 50, number 15. Ah. 2019, sorry. Finally. Finally, climb down that damn, damn number. All right, all right. Most Iconic Oregon Burlesque Festival 2019. True. <laughs> number three, number three, best soloist and burlesque at the Albu is it the Albuquerque Burlesque Festival? Yes. A Burley Q Festival in 2019. That was a very intense night, and they got it right. Go ahead. Yes, Legendary Entertainer Award LGBT slash Shakedown Productions 2018. I'm gonna say humble. Because I love it that. Came from We're gonna do this one again because you had a different number. Twenty first century burlesque top fifty number twenty six two thousand and eighteen. I was so happy <laughs> that I even made it. <laughs> you deserve it. You definitely deserved it. Competed for the best debut in the two thousand seventeen and Queen two thousand and eighteen at the Burlesque Hall of Fame. That's technically yeah. two, but yeah. Um, I put nominee on my website. I'm gonna say terrified. <laughs> I'm terrified. That's that's, a, that's honest. All right, number seven, Miss Marvel Universe 2018. I was shocked as fuck. I was master, so shocked. Number eight, Master of Nerd Less 2018, second runner up. I was I was humble with that one because that's not my thing, but very humbled and grateful. That's two words. But okay. I don't I don't know anything that isn't your thing. Uh, number nine, Judge's Choice for Best Bribe Award, Shimmy Showdown 2018. That shit was fun. Oh, my God. That shit was fun. Yes. Oh okay, that show is one. Ah! That show <laughs> <laughs> No wonder. That is smart. Best Bribe Award, indeed. I thought of Jeez Louise. I was like, wait a minute. What would Jeezy do? That is so smart. 
Number 10, I love this one. Best Latin Representation Award at the International Latin and Hispanic Burlesque Festival in 2018. Okay, I'm going to give one, more than one word. That one was very um, special to me because being an Afro-Latina, I was never noticed as that. So to represent culture and represent being an Afro-Latina, that one was very special. That's special. Yes. I love that. Number 11, Entertainer of the Year 2018 West Coast Hour Honors Award. I was surprised. All right, Ambassador Queen of Viva Las Vegas 2018. <laughs> <laughs> Number 13, 25. <laughs> I'm going uh, to say this one because I think this... No, this isn't even the first time you were listed. 21st you know, century. I want to answer that one and I'm going to say strategic. I like that word for it. Okay. We're going to skip We're gonna skip 21st century because we have it a couple more okay. times here. But okay. Queen, right. Queen of Humboldt Burlesque 2017-18. Ah, at the time, it was fun. Let's just say fun. I like that. Okay. Ooh, what about this one? You know, I love this one. Miss Hollywood Burlesque 2017-2018. I don't like to share. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, I love that one. All right, all right. What about uh, Dita Von T's Choice Award Viva Las Vegas 2017? I was very shocked about that decision, but very, um, I was grateful. And it was a, an amazing, you know, really, I love that title more than I was thinking I was going to love being Miss Viva Las Vegas. I think that title helped my career a little bit more than Viva Las Vegas would have. Ooh, that's some tea. I didn't know I was getting chamomile with this game. Uh, uh, Queen of Texas Burlesque Best Solo at the Texas Burlesque Festival in 2017. It was fun. <laughs> 20, we're going to skip 21st century. Uh, number 20, I can't believe we're only halfway, girl. Unsung Hero Award for HIV AIDS Awareness and Prevention at the 2016 Honors Award. Bless. Mm, I love that. Miss San Antonio yeah. Burlesque Queen 2016. Loved it because it was the most Latino people. What about Burley Picks World Championship Games overall winner? That year you took home Master of Assholes, Best Dancer, and Most Fierce. Damn, did you also win Best Costume and Legends? choice and i'm gonna say that motherfucker time <laughs> Listen, do you know do you know that you are officially the lauren hill of the 1998 grammy awards no was it 99 <laughs> you know when she just won all of the awards she won everything yeah they just were like yeah. here you go you just have everything did you win you know, five okay, awards yeah, at that yeah. one festival you know what's funny about that is that the day before throwy picks i competed in a pinup contest and um, my mom, I was like, wouldn't it be funny if I won the pinup contest and won everything at Burley Peak? She said, no, it's not funny because I already played on it and you will. And I won the fucking pinup contest. Yeah. And then came in one Burley Peak and I was like, oh. Look I was just going to mention the Miss Pinup Perfect, Miss Pinup Perfection Queen 2016. Yes. Do you know, do you know what it feels like to lose? Like, is that something? That oh, you, hell yeah. Hell yeah, I know what it is. Of course, you know, the yeah. I don't, there's no way that I feel like if someone has this many accolades, there's no way that they don't not only know rejection, but they know how to overcome it. Yeah, against those 40, I lost about 20. Oof. And on top of that, I competed for the Miss Universe system for a lot of time in my life. Right. So, yeah, I know how to lose badly. Ooh, sorry, I told you about Shay. Let's keep it going. We're going to rapid fire these because you still got uh, 10 more to go. We got California Burley Picks gold medalist. Damn, wait, is this still? No, that's not a part of the same one. Most entertaining Albuquerque Burlesque Festival 2016. Yeah, that was fun. Yeah. <laughs> the California Burley Picks gold medalist and master of assholes. It was about damn time. Go ahead. Miss Viva Las <laughs> Vegas Princess 2016. Uh-huh, next. It's Sparkly Devil Scholarship winner of Beehoff in 2016, which was also my first year attending. That was amazing. That was a, a great experience. I can't imagine. Then you also won Best Soloist at the Great Burlesque Exposition 
in 2016. Yes, Hong Kong. And then you also won Most Erotic at Hollywood Burlesque Festival the year before that in 2015. Because I'm nasty. <laughs> Queen of Southern Fried Burlesque Festival 2015. Jeez Louise crowned me that year. I remember that. And you also got the People's Choice Award for that in the same festival. You also got Biggest Tease at the Oklahoma Burlesque Festival in 2015. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Look at this. Silver medal winner, California Burley Picks 2015. And then Princess of the Great Southern Burlesque Festival in 2014 and 2015. And that was my first ever competition in burlesque. I didn't even think we had enough time to do it. I really honestly did not want to do that because I didn't want to talk too much, but I love having you share a little bit of it because honestly, it is amazing to see you go from starting your journey in burlesque and, and seeing everything you've accomplished. It's just, it motivates people. It motivates me. I love you. You know, I love you. I love you too. And you know, the reason why I decided to compete very briefly was because I couldn't find my way in burlesque. Yeah. You know, I, I've always, you know, a lot of people don't know, but I'm already a legend in the strip game, you know, so. Very true. I wanted to start from the bottom and work my way up because it was so much, it was a learning process. It was different, you know. And um, when I started competing, it was just me trying to find my way, trying to be different and unique. And I remember saying, I want to be the first black. And then. I was like, why I got to be the first black? I want to be the first Afro-Latina. Why I got to be the first Afro-Latina? And then it just came down to, I want to be the first. And the reason why is because I wanted women and men and women days. I want to get used to saying pronouns. It's, it's new for me. Um, I wanted them to feel that it really doesn't matter how old you are because I started late in the game because I came from another game. You know, it doesn't matter how big, how small you are. It doesn't matter what color or race you are, if you're motivated and it's something that you want, go fucking get it. Talking about it and being about it is two different things. Two different things. Message. Message, two things. And two I wanted to be the first. And it's not about being the last. It's about setting the foundation for someone else to come with it. And it's so important to find your own way in burlesque because it is not only something that's eventually like evolving so much that it is kind of hard to really look at anyone else and follow their path. You have to kind of create your own, which I love about that. Uh, Ethan, before we go, I got seven minutes with you, but that's more than enough time to play a game with you. Do you want to play a game? Yes, let's play a game. Let me make sure that uh, I mentioned everything that you wanted to mention. We mentioned the documentary and... Uh, Oh, yeah, we'll mention that in the game. Um, here we go. We're going to play a sick game of Fuck, Marry, and Kill, which is one of my favorite games to play with people. It, <laughs> helps, it helps me know a little bit more about you. And this one's not going to be too long, but it's definitely going to be fun. So what's going to happen is I'm going to show three people to the side here, and you are going to tell me in detail who you would fuck, who you would marry, and who you would kill, and why. You ready, okay. Egypt? I think so. <laughs> Egypt. Here we go. Our first fuck, marry, and kill is Ray Gunn, Jeez Louise, and Pearl Noir. <laughs> I should have saved this for last. Oh, you want to go last? You want to wait on this one? No, no. Um, I probably will fuck Jeez Louise. Hmm. He seemed like a, a fun fuck. I bet. I probably will marry Pearl. I will probably kill Ray because I'm lesbian. <laughs> <laughs> but I love them I, real life. I had to put them in there because I was like, look at that smile. They look all so fucking beautiful. All right, all right. <laughs> we're gonna try we're gonna try a different thing. Damn, did I only pick black people? Hey. I guess whatever I, did. Way. I guess I did. All right, this one's gonna be a little bit uh we'll see. We got Aaliyah, we got Beyonce, and we got Rihanna. This is how I should have started it to help you get into it, you know. I know, first of all. I would buy the fuck out of this album. And you can't say kill will, Aaliyah. No, no, no. I will fuck Rihanna. <laughs> you know, this is kind of hard because I'm a hard Beyonce fan, but I will I mean, fuck you could Rihanna. Take kill I will, no, I will fuck Rihanna because I've met her personally and she's nasty and she'll be a good fuck. Ooh. 
I would marry Aaliyah because she was humble when she was yes. here. And she was a beautiful woman. I never met her, but just listening to her story. And I would have to kill Beyonce, but I wouldn't want to, but I would have to. It's part of the game. It's not that you really want to. This one is going to be switching it up. There's no black people in this one, but they're kind of yeah, Well, come on. We got Facebook, Instagram, and OnlyFans. Which one would I kill? I'll kill Facebook. <laughs> My bitch. I'll fuck Instagram and marry OnlyFans because that's where my money is. That's what I'm <laughs> saying. Make sure you check Egypt out. Send me that link so I can post, post that shit in the comments. Okay. Uh, yeah. I would completely agree with that. That is exactly uh, what I would have to say about that. Also, we got one more, and this one is your favorite TV show of all time. We got Jimmy. We got Thelma. And then, damn, why am I forgetting her name right now? Um, um, her mother? Yeah, um, the, the mom. Yeah, the mom, okay. Damn, why can't I remember that right now? You know what, and if you wouldn't have said you forgot, I would have remembered, because I watch this shit every day, every night, okay? So, I will fuck Selma. Yeah, I will fuck Selma. Yeah. I will marry her mom. Her, she, she can cook, that bitch can cook, she can <laughs> play. <laughs> and you know she's a good partner. She's supportive. She's very supportive. And JJ, he'll just have to get. He gotta yeah. go. He's just. Right. I'm mad that I mean, he he's the best picture from the one I found. He's Donna Mike and shit, but you know, whatever. <laughs> if you have to, that's the lesser of all the evils. Um, that is all the time that I have, Egypt. I love you so much. I love you so much for joining love you. Us here at the Tito Bonito Show. Anytime you want to come back and tell us about that meeting with Rihanna, you are more than welcome to come back, girl. Yeah. Anything I've had else? a meeting with a lot of bitches. Anytime and, you want to spill the tea, <laughs> you're start, spill the tea with Tito. I'm ready for it. Tea time. Tea time. Okay. Tea time with Tito. Now I got to watch my bitch say I win. <laughs> Do you, uh, you anything know, else I'm you want to? I'm going to do Say Kule. I'm at her at DJ joint. Uh -huh. She performed and she killed it, so I was really hoping this was her year. I was really hoping this was it. So. Ah! I love you Peace. so much. Thank you for joining. I if you like, if you loved hearing Egypt talk today, make sure you uh, send some money her way. It is uh, very hard to live in this pandemic as an artist, but we do in this shit. Egypt, I love you. Hit me I up love anytime. You. Thank you. Anytime, I love you so much, girl. You're the shit. Give it up for Egypt Black now. Oh, all right, y'all. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm going to turn on the comments for the last minute. Uh, thank you so much for watching the show. Again, if you want to support me, you can check out my OnlyFans. It's softcore, only $5 a month, right on the Instagram. If you want to not pay for some shit, check me out on TikTok. I'm trying to blow the fuck up there. Uh, that's at It's Tito Bonito. Also, this weekend, you can watch me at Eat It on Twitch, hosted by Rubella Spreads. I'll be, uh, we'll be playing the Rain On Me music video featuring Tito Soto and myself. Other than that, you can check us out every Friday right here on Instagram Live for the Tito Bonito Show. Next week's special guests include Ruby Champagne and Miss Indigo Blue. And you never know, Jeezy might just jump on in. Uh, also, that is the OnlyFans right there. I'm going to pin that comment for Egypt Black. Now, I'll put the rest of the comments for Joe and Egypt in the comments to the IGTV. If you like what you see, share it with all your friends and check out past episodes. But uh, I love you. I mean it. And remember, y'all, this is what I want to leave y'all with. Be kind to each other. But most of all, your damn self. I love y'all. Make good choices. Make good choices. I worry about you.